Questions 33 to 36 in the ACERT purple paper. Question 33. Consider saturated solutions at 25 degrees of the three alkali metal hydroxides, uh, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and potassium hydroxide. Which one of the following is correct? So we are asked to basically figure out the pH values for each of these metal hydroxides. To do that, what we've got to do is we've got to find the number of moles of each metal hydroxide that we have. So for lithium hydroxide, we have uh, 12.8 over 23.95. So that's just the mass of solute divided by the molar mass. And, and we got those uh, sort of uh, figures from the table. And what we get is 13 on 24, if we just sort of round it a little bit, which is about 0.5. For sodium hydroxide, we get about 3. And for potassium hydroxide, we get about 2. So therefore, the number of moles of all of these um, bases slash metal hydroxides is going to be in the order. So we've got lithium hydroxide has the least, uh, potassium hydroxide has the next most amount, and sodium hydroxide has the most. So as one metal hydroxide dissociates into one hydroxide, we can therefore say that the number of moles of hydroxide uh, that are going to be in each of the respective solutions is going to be in the order lithium hydroxide, then uh, potassium hydroxide, then sodium hydroxide. And also since we have a sort of constant volume, We've got that volume of 100 mils of water. We can say that the concentrations of hydroxide is going to be lithium uh, in the order of lithium hydroxide, then potassium hydroxide, then sodium hydroxide, just as the same as before for the moles of hydroxide. So the concentration of hydroxide is going to be in this order. So uh, taking that rule from the stem that the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. We therefore know that if we have an increased concentration of hydroxide ions, our, uh, our hydrogen ion concentration will decrease. Because if this goes up, then this has to go down for this number to remain constant. And then if this goes up, then this has to go down for this number to remain constant. So the concentration of hydrox hydrogen ions, sorry, so the concentration of hydrogen ions will therefore be in this order. So be sodium hy hydroxide, then um, potassium hydroxide, then lithium hydroxide. So it's just in the reverse order of this because the more hydroxide ions you have, the less um, hydrogen ions you're going to have. So we know that the greater the concentration of hydrogen ions, the lower our pH is, so the more acidic our pH will be. Therefore, we can say that the pH of each of these metal hydroxides is going to be in this order. So since lithium hydroxide has the most hydrogen ions, therefore it will have the lowest pH. And therefore, this is the order that we're going to see for each of our pHs. And therefore, for question 33, C is the correct answer. Question 34. A solution is made by dissolving 80 grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 mils of water and is cooled, uh, allowed to cool sorry, to 25 degrees Celsius. What is the pH of this solution? So what we have is, um, well, we can figure out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So that's equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So we've got 80 on 40, therefore the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we have is 2. And since every mole of sodium hydroxide dissociates to form one mole of um, hydroxide, we can say that the number of moles of hydroxide that we have is 2. From there we can try and figure out the um, concentration of hydroxide, so that's equal to the number of moles on the volume, and that's equal to 2 on 0.1 because we have 100 mils of water. So therefore, the concentration of hydroxide is 20. From there, we can figure out the pOH. So the uh, P, sorry, that should just be. P. 
P-O-H. So free out the P-O-H uh, and that is found by taking the negative log 10 of the concentration of hydroxide. So if we just sub in that concentration of hydroxide that we found, we get neg log 10 of 20. And this is about equal, so uh, neg log 10 of 20 is about equal to negative 1.3. Because uh, log 10 of 10 is 1. So 20 is obviously a little bit bigger than 10. So, but, um, so therefore the log is going to be a little bit over 1. So from there we can try and figure out our pH. So from the stem we're told that the uh, pH is equal to 14 plus log 10 of um, the concentration of OH. And this requires a little bit of manipulation. So we can say that pH is equal to 14 minus negative log 10 of the concentration of OH. And therefore we can say that the pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So you've got to remember that pOH is equal to negative log 10 of the concentration of OH and not uh, log 10 of concentration of OH. So therefore to um, insert our pOH into this formula, you need to get it into the correct you need to get the log 10 um, into the correct negative form. So once you've uh, made sure to do that, we get pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. So therefore the pH is equal to 14 minus negative 1.3, which is equal to 15.3. So therefore our pH of this solution is going to be a little bit greater than 15. So D is the correct answer. So I just realized that it might be really confusing as to how log 10 of 20 is equal to 1.3. So we know that log uh, 10 of 10 is equal to 1 and log 10 of 100 is equal to 2. So therefore log 10 of 20 is going to be somewhere in between 1 and 2. And since uh, the number 20 has a smaller difference between it and 10 than it and 100. We can say that the result of log 10, 20 is going to be somewhere that's closer to 1 than to 2. So if you sort of guess that log 10 of 20 is anywhere between say 1.1 to 1.3 for the purpose of the SCAMSA question, well, what's going to happen is you're actually going to get the right answer anyway. So being too super exact with your uh, with the result of log 10 and 20 isn't necessary. You just need to be within a suitable range of of error. Um, but yeah, this is sort of how you guesstimate uh, the result of log uh, equations. So log 10 and 20 about equal to 1.3. Question 35, which of the following lists the three alkali metal hydroxides in descending order of the volume of carbon dioxide that they would remove from the atmosphere? So we are told that alkali metal hydroxides react with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonate compounds. So if when alkali metal hydroxides, uh, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc., um, if alkali metal hydroxides react with carbon dioxide and they turn that carbon dioxide into something else, namely in this case hydrogen carbonate compounds, well what we're doing is we're essentially removing carbon dioxide from that atmosphere because it's being turned into something else. So what we want therefore is we want a greater um, molar, sorry, a greater number of moles of alkali metal hydroxides in order to remove more carbon dioxide. So the more alkali metal hydroxides we have, the more carbon dioxide we're gonna remove. So it's pretty simple to figure out the number of moles of each of these uh, alkali metal hydroxides if we have 100 grams of each of them. 
and that's just by dividing the mass 100 grams by the molar mass so if you do this you'll find that lithium uh, hydroxide has the most uh, sodium hydroxide has uh, the next most and potassium hydroxide has the least so therefore the answer uh, the answer A would be the correct answer for question 35. Question 36. Which of the following shows the initial chemical reaction that occurs when a solution of potassium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide? So in A we've got um, potassium hydroxide and that's mi mixing with carbon dioxide to give potassium hydrogen carbonate. Now the key point to note here is that um, we've got potassium hydrogen carbonate as a solid. So that is incorrect because we know that potassium hydroxide is extremely soluble. In that second line from the stem, um, it states that when dissolved in water, these compounds ionize completely, i.e. these alkali hydro metal hydroxides ionize completely so they're extremely soluble when we mix them with um, when we're going to mix this with carbon dioxide to form this the product is still going to be soluble so we're not going to expect it um, uh, potassium hydrogen carbonate to be a solid we're going to expect it to be aqueous so a is incorrect if we move on to b b looks pretty good um, nothing wrong with b but let's just rule out c and d so we are told in question 35 in that first uh, part, alkali metal hydroxides react with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonate compounds. So they are used to remove carbon dioxide from an enclosed atmosphere. So alkali metal hydroxide, um, alkali metal hydroxide reacts with carbon to form a hydrogen carbonate compound. So this is a hydrogen carbonate, but what we've got in um, C and D is we're forming K2CO3. CO, K2CO3 is only um, potassium carbonate, not hydrogen carbonate. We need that hydrogen in there. So um, C and D are wrong for that reason. So therefore, for question 36, B is the correct answer.